Thank you, precious Father. Thank you because we are honored in you. Thank you because we are looking into our scroll. And we are, we are seeing ourselves as we are in you. Thank you because the closed book is now open. And we are looking into the book. In the book of Revelation, we saw the cry there because the book was closed. But now the book is open. We're reading the book and we're looking into our scroll and we're seeing ourselves as we are in you. And we have accepted who we are. We have accepted the image we, 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 we are seeing in the book to be who we are. And that image which we are is Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ means being all he is. Having the mind of Christ means accepting his personality to be your personality. Having the mind of Christ means that God's testimony concerning him is your testimony. Having the mind of Christ means that all that all that all of the father that, that, are, that are embodied in him are your realities and they are as well embodied in your spirit up to now many of of God's children many believers are yet to comprehend the reality of Christ finished work they are yet to comprehend the the ultimate agenda of god they are yet to to comprehend that and the simple reason is that they are caught up in religious sermons and doctrines that does not as it were project realities of God's kingdom religion and religious doctrines and sermons keeps people in the state of hope it gives them the sense of duality it fights any thought that suggests that the believer is one with God it fights any thought that suggests to the believer that he is as Christ is now I need us to understand that any revelation or any message or sermon that stands against the reality of believers' indivisible oneness with the Creator is the voice of Satan and not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Any voice that suggests to you that you are not as he is, that you are not Christ, okay, is the voice of Satan and not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Trying to separate the body from the head and then giving the body and body an identity that is not the identity of the head is not holy spirit speaking is not holy spirit speaking now the human race the human race all came out from adam and because they came out from adam they are adam when Adam fell, Adam became a man of the earth, earthy. So all that came out from Adam also obtained that identity of being earthy. 
because they were all in Adam when Adam died. 2 Corinthians 15.22 For as in Adam all died. Alright? The human race, as you see them today, are a product of Adam's spam. Adam's spam, seed. Humans are made from Adam's seed, his spam. It is that spam that a man injects into a woman for the formation of a baby in the woman's womb. No woman on the earth today, all right, gives birth to a child without a seed. Even those that are today being manufactured outside the womb of the woman. You know, science now manufactures humans outside the womb. But even at that, it is still the man's seed they take and they inject it into a scientific, scientific created environment for the formation of the baby. So a baby can be formed, a baby, a babies are designed to be formed in the womb of a woman. Humans are designed to be formed, coupled in the belly of a woman but today science couples humans outside of the, the belly of a woman and i said even at that it is still the seed of man they take there is nothing on the earth that can create the human structure except the seed of man so Science had to take seed from the man, all right, create an environment outside of the womb where the seed can also um, um, conceive and develop. So we, we, we have humans today who have been developed outside of the womb of a woman but originally originally god created the womb of a woman to be a place where humans are developed so a woman will have to receive seed from the man for the development of the baby in her womb all right now and i'm saying that because that very seed was affected at the fall of adam Okay, it was after the fall, Adam began to procreate. So, every human being that came out from Adam, starting from Cain and starting from Cain and Abel, were affected by the fall of the human progenitor, which is Adam. So, 1 Corinthians 15:22 says, "For as in Adam." all died for us in adam all died it went further to say even so in christ all shall be made alive so all who died in adam obtained the identity that made them humans a human being is a man in a fallen state i see believers who still call themselves humans no the moment you were baptized into christ you cease to be a human being because he who saved you translated you from where humans fell into through adam which is what bible referred to as kingdom of um referred to as kingdom of darkness now you are in the kingdom of his own dear son so the owner of the kingdom is now your identity the owner of the kingdom is what defines you now where you are has to become a living reality in your mind 
He saved you and translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his own dear son. There is a translation there. Just as Adam was translated out of the garden into the visible earth. Shortly after the fall, Adam was led out of the garden of Eden. That is, that is a picture of translation. It means a movement from one location to another location. So, God moved Adam from a location known as Garden of Eden to another location and then placed an angel at the entrance of the garden so that Adam will not find his way back into the garden. So, Adam obtained an identity by his fall, which made him an earthly man, a man of the earth. You see that? A human being. Human being. Human being. Adam was never called human before the fall. Human being is a name that described a man in his fallen state. He was called Adam. Eve was also called Adam. He said he made them male and female and called both Adam. Eve is Adam. Adam by nature and Adam is Adam by nature so Adam is a name that this that defined them okay in their original state as God made them then the moment they experienced mutation they experienced they came into an experience of mutation in other words they, they, they metamorphosed into something which is the reason they were taken out of the Garden of Eden, in their fallen state, they obtained a new name, human beings. So, if you are born again, you are not human. When you say, I'm a human being, you are saying, in reality, I am a man in a fallen state. I am a man in a fallen state. I am a man without God in the world. But that is not your identity. You are not a man without God. You are a man in whom God dwells. You are not just a man with God. You are a man in whom God lives. God dwells. You are God's habitation. And God is your habitation. You are God's habitation. And God is your habitation. This is the mystery of Jesus tried to unravel in John 17, 21. Father, I pray that they might be one in us, as we are one, I in you, you in me, that they might be one in us. So, that declaration or affirmation, okay, became a reality when a man is baptized into christ you were not baptized and then brought out to exist outside christ from the moment you were baptized into christ your existence in him began and is to continue there's no end to your existence in christ you see that so those who are refusing to accept their Christ identity, Christ nature, think that they are doing God good. They don't want to be seen to be, to be equal with God. They don't want to be seen to, 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 you know, those thoughts. It is carnality that makes a man a saint, a believer. To reject his equality with his father. You know, your, our equality with our father is defined in the life of his, which he gave to us. So when I say I am God, I am referring to the life he gave to me. I don't have a different life. God is my life. God is, is the one I inherited. So... I am to be defined by my inheritance. You see denominations 
talk about the fact that everything Satan has stolen from you. Satan cannot steal anything from you. Does Satan need car? Does he need house? Does he need your money? Does he need your shoes? Satan will never steal your shoe. He will never steal your car. He will never steal your house. He doesn't need it. Angels don't live in, in, in houses. They don't ride cars. They don't wear clothes. They don't eat your food in the kitchen. So they don't, they don't have interest in those things because it means nothing to them. It does not add to their value. You see that? So, and what is yours is something beyond his reach. Your inheritance is beyond Satan's reach because your inheritance is God. All right. Now, Romans chapter 8 says, Romans chapter 8. Okay, so let's read the scripture for those who would want to see what we are saying. Now, let's read Romans chapter 8, 17. Romans 8, 17. And it reads, And if children, then has heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And if children, then has heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So we are joint heirs with Christ. If we are joint heirs with Christ, then it is important that we find out what Christ inherited which we are joint heads with him. So, that will take us to Hebrew. The book of Hebrew. Okay. Look at um, Hebrew chapter 1. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 4. Alright. Now, the scripture is talking about Jesus, but let's read from verse 1. Then we get to verse 4. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he appointed heads of all things, and by whom he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. You see that? And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand side of majesty on high. All right, verse 4. Be made so much better than the angels. Be, this, are, this is the, the spiritual principle that many don't seem to understand. Don't forget that John chapter 1 has a record that Jesus, the word of God, by him all things were made, including angels. So it will make no spiritual sense Okay, to say, it will make no common sense, not spiritual sense now, to say that he who made all things is now made better than what he made. So, you see those who try to reason out spiritual realities. Doesn't make sense. Okay, but the scripture here said that he was made a little, a lower, little lower than, he was made far more better than angels. Is not being compared with angels. It is the fact it is that he took on the form of man and was made lower than angels in that reality, in that regard. Alright, the Bible says he did not take on him the nature of angels, rather, he took on him the nature of man whom he came to save. So when he descended into the into the realm of man or class of man. You remember Hebrew chapter 2 verse 14. Wherefore, as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he likewise took part of the same. So when he took part of in the identity and structure of man in his fallen state, angels were seen to be higher than him in that state. So, and then in that state, he tested death for all men. After he tested death, God raised him up 
above the state he descended into to be able to test death. So, so this scripture now is now showing you his present state. His present state. Now, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. What is the more excellent name he inherited? By inheritance he obtained a more excellent name. Name here is identity. Name here is an identity. It's not what you call people. It's not name tag. It's an identity. He obtained an identity. An identity that is better than the identity given to angels when they were created. On the ground of this identity, which is the new name he inherited by inheritance, angels were commanded to worship him when he was raised from the dead. Great is the mystery of godliness. God showed up in the flesh. Sin of angels. You see? So, when he was raised from the dead, the scripture says that God commanded all angels to worship him. He commanded all the angels to worship him. And they did worship him. Look at verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten. See the word he called him. First begotten. Meaning the head of the new creation race. And the new creation race, they are of the same identity, the same name. So the head of the new creation race is Christ. Christ means a man in whom the fullness of the Godhead is embodied. Christ means a man. This man now is not the, is not the human kind of man. Is not, is not the Adamic kind of man. That is why he's called new man. New man. A man that is completely different from the Adamic kind of man. So, Christ Jesus is the first begotten of that kind of man. The same way Adam is the first, first kind of the kind of man in his race, the Adamic race, the human race. Adam is the first kind of the human race. Christ, the word of God, in his visible expression, is the first kind of the begotten man. There is the begotten man, there is the created man. Adam is the created man. Humans, human race, humans are created men. Adam is a begotten man. So, when you got born again, your born again experience is your baptism into Christ. Not water baptism now. And I'm not really not water baptism for those who do water baptism, keep doing your water baptism, alright? I'm talking about the actual baptism, which is the entrance of your spirit into the Christ spirit, which made your spirit and the Christ spirit one spirit. So that experience, okay, is, is a begotten birth experience. There, there is biological birth experience. Biological birth experience is the journey of this your physical body, the soul of the body, and the spirit of the body out of a woman's belly. That you call biological birth. So at biological birth, we see a baby coming out of the womb of a woman. A baby boy or a baby girl. Alright? Then begotten birth experience is beyond the comprehension of human humans. Up to now, even believers are struggling to understand the reality of begotten birth experience. And God declared concerning Jesus and said, You are my begotten son. 
This day have I begotten you. This day have I begotten you. Meaning you are from today a man in whom my fullness resides bodily. You are my express image from this day. You are my, you are my, um, you are the brightness of my glory from this day. That's the begotten. And so the scripture is saying, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. At this point, he is now made better and higher and more glorified than the angels. All right, you remember that this same person, angels, when they saw him at Gethsemane, did not worship him. They went there to encourage him. And then again, when he bringeth forth, when was it that he brought forth the first begotten? At resurrection. And so when you read Roman, Hebrew, Roman, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, where the scripture spoke about the mighty power which God wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, he was talking about what Jesus inherited by inheritance. And the scripture said that we are co-heirs. Now, if Jesus Christ, by this inheritance, was declared to be God, the scripture says concerning him, Verse 8, but unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God. Once you inherit God, you become God by inheritance. Once you are baptized into Christ, you become what he inherited by inheritance. So his name becomes your name. His life becomes your life. His throne becomes your throne. His kingdom becomes your kingdom. His environment becomes your environment. His anointing becomes your anointing. His power becomes your power. His identity becomes your identity. It's too simple. But certain persons just del deliberately decide not to believe it. And they are all out to stop those who want to believe it not to believe it. What kind of mindset is that? I am Christ. Simple. If you are not, keep it yourself. I am Christ. Because I am co-heir. Christ means a man in whom the fullness of the Father dwells. So we are not receiving from the Father. We are knowing his fullness that is now embodied in our spirit. Philemon verse 6. He said that the communication of our faith becomes effective or effectual as we acknowledge every good thing in us, in Christ, in us, in Christ, in us, in Christ, in us, in Christ. How do you plan to reign on the earth? You are to reign as a human being, nothing that is associated with the elements of the fallen universe that is going to bow to you as long as you hold in view the consciousness of being a human being. You can't be born again and say you are a human being. Then you are denying your resurrection experience in Christ. The Bible said he raised us up together. The resurrected Christ, the moment a man becomes born again, before God, he is seen to be the resurrected Christ. So the scripture says he raised you up together. So in your born again experience, you picked from him his resurrected identity. His resurrected glory. That's your identity. So if the elements of creation of the universe, the laws of the universe is going to respond to you, all right, and bow to you. You must be able to approach them with the consciousness of being one in whom the fullness of the Father is embodied. You must approach elements of the universe with the consciousness of being one who is Christ in reality. Because 
you the body of Christ, and Christ your head is one. You check it out in John 17, 21. It's there. You check it out in uh, Romans chapter 8, 17 that I just read. You see there. In Hebrew chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, the image of Christ is revealed there. Is your image. That's your reality. That's your identity. So what we preach to the world is that they, that there is a provided immortal identity called Christ. And they are to come and take that identity. In taking that identity, they lose Adamic identity, which is the identity of the fallen man. And they are no longer to be defined in Adamic identity. They, now, they are now defined in Christ's identity. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 32. It says, giving no offense, neither to the Jews, to the Gentiles, nor to the church. So you see, that scripture mentioned the Jews, the Gentiles, the church. The church is neither the Jew nor the Gentile. The Gentile man is neither the church, is not the church. The Jewish man is not the church. So there is the Jewish man, there is the Gentile man. And then you have the church, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 32. So when a Jewish man is born again, he ceases to be Jew. He's now church. When the Gentile man gets born again, he ceases to be Gentile. He's now church. The church is not human. The Jews and the Gentiles are humans because they are from Adam and they inherited Adamic fallen nature, which made them human, human beings. I am Christ being, not human being. Accept your identity. Leave those who have so taken of the old wine. They have so taken of the old wine. That now, embracing the new wine has become so difficult. God understands and is going to harvest them out of the earth with that mindset. Because even he himself cannot help them out. They have decided to stay in that state and remain in that state. But you that the Spirit of God is opening your eyes to see yourself as you are in Christ. Make a U-turn. Embrace your identity. And give God the, the opportunity to manifest himself as he is in his creation. Because you are the portal designed by God in the new creation order to manifest himself fully and visibly in creation. Love you so much. Stay blessed. Um, we have a YouTube channel and I would like you, if you have not subscribed, to kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is the name is the Sound Potters of Immortality. Go to YouTube, type the Sound Potters of Immortality. All right, subscribe. Watch our videos. Drop your comment there. And if you have any question, also drop your question, and we're gonna to attend to it. All right. Next week, my.